The Morning X with Barnes and Leslie. Join me. Perhaps you may be able to help solve the mystery. 99X. It's The Morning X, Barnes and Leslie. And if you listen to the show at all, you know that we are all about true crime. Absolutely cannot get enough. I watch every single thing about it. And one of the all-time, you know, really up at the beginning of the true crime game was Unsolved Mysteries. Oh, absolutely. For years and years and years. I would like you to meet the brain, the co-creator behind bringing that to life, Terry Dunn Muir. Hello, Terry. Hi, good morning. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Thank you for having me on. You've made a nice life from true crime. <laughs> it's been 35 years <laughs> since we began the series. Yeah, it has become become my life and my career. Well, congratulations. It's unbelievable what you guys have done. Uh, you know, you, you've talked about how you have found out about some of these stories in small towns where maybe people never would have known about them. How do you find out about those stories? Well, back when we started Unsolved, it was through a a clipping service. People would send us newspaper clippings or else we would just do cold calls to law enforcement agencies and say, this is who we are. We're Unsolved Mysteries. We're starting the series. And and what kind of cases do you have? And then uh, once the cases started getting solved and the series became more popular, people would uh, send us send us mail, viewer mail um, with story suggestions. And we had a team of researchers that would go through those piles and piles and piles of mail looking for stories that we could produce. The hardest part was always to to have to make a choice. You know, we had to choose some. We couldn't choose others. And, um, and that was always hard because we wanted to be able to tell all the stories. What was your background? Was it news? Was your background, like, what led you to even want to make these stories? No, I'm just, um, uh, just TV documentary was my background. I had done some documentaries for uh, HBO America Undercover series. And um, so, no, I just, I started my career in, in film and television. Um, I did read Nancy Drew books when I was young. Oh, I, okay. I knew there was something I, that ignited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and Agatha, Agatha Christie, in fact, my dog is named Drew um, after Nancy Drew. Um, because, yeah, she kind of got me started, I guess, um, in this business. I've just always loved mysteries and, and tried to puzzle them out and, uh, it's interesting when I look back and realize that I actually took that passion when I was young and turned it into a, a career. I do love watching these, but sometimes late at night, if I watch them, I end up having nightmares, honestly. I can't imagine throughout the years that you haven't had sleepless nights and nightmares. Uh, you know, uh, somehow we've, you, uh, we, we've heard so many, so many stories over the years that you, um, kind of develop a a tolerance to that, I guess. There are some stories that bother me more than others, and I might lay awake thinking about those. Probably I was laying awake thinking about making our deadlines for the series (laughs) and how we were going to do that, maybe maybe more than the cases. But I took them all to heart, and I can tell you that my three children have heard many cautionary tales about um, how not to become an unsolved mystery. Um, and um, I probably p- passed on all that that anxiety to my children to make sure that they they stay safe because um, you know some of the cases are are really frightening. The, I think the ones that bother me the most are the ones where everyone's someone someone's doing everything right. You know they're not they're not doing anything they shouldn't be doing, and and something happens. Those random cases of violence are the ones that I find the. The, the most frightening. I think it's a great education. And I try to get my daughters to watch and they just give me the, yeah, no. And I'm like, but this is happening <laughs> out in the know world. What's happening. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can see what happens even to people who aren't suspecting, you know, that something's going to happen to them. And I feel like it's a good way, you know, to get just kind of like, you know, a pulse of what it's like out there. We're talking to co creator of Unsolved Mysteries, Terry Dunmuir, and a lot of your cases have been from Atlanta mm-hmm. over the years. I mean, there are so many. I was doing my research on how many of them actually made it onto your show. We've got this one from Marietta called Tatum's Ghost, which was these people who had a bunch of supernatural occurrences in their new home. There was one about this guy who bought a computer in Marietta, this computer con killer. It was about Tom Johnson. He answered an ad to buy a used computer and asked this young couple to deliver it to his motel. And then... Of course, you know what happens. Johnson brandished a gun and instructed the pair to roll themselves into bed sheets. 
I mean, just crazy stuff. And then the Fatal Flowers one, which still shows up in shows all the time. You remember that one? I do. Fatal Flowers, this this poor woman just answers the door uh, and there's a flower delivery and, and the person delivering the flowers shoots her and she dies in her hallway. That one was was frightening. Yeah, that's Buckhead, a person delivering flowers and they pull out a gun. And that, by the way, the, the Royal Thai police, when I was going down my rabbit hole, they arrested the Lita's ex-husband, James Sullivan. He was living in a beachfront condo a, a hundred miles south of Bangkok with his Thai girlfriend. So all that just to get away with his girlfriend is just so bad. Yeah, that one, that one, um, I really, that, I'm very happy about that solved case because it, it kind of demonstrates the reach of the series. Um, you know, when we started a lot of these small town cases, uh, you know, you have a crime, local crime stoppers that can get the word out, but Unsolved Mysteries was able to get the, the word out internationally. Um, and we had cases that were solved in other countries, which um, it just just shows you the reach, the reach of the series. And, and I, I kind of hope that Unsolved Mysteries served as a, as a deterrent to criminals, it's like, oh, I don't want to get on unsolved mysteries. Maybe I won't do that because they could see that, um, you know, the, the viewers were going to find them. It was, it's not, it's not the series. It's really, I always say, it's the viewers that um, are the ones that have solved these cases. You have said that you consider yourselves the court of last resort, where people would come to you because law enforcement exhausted everything. Can you remember like one case where you were like, wow? fully satisfied because something got overturned. Well, there's one case that I always think about. Um, it was called Mom's Genetic Curse, <clears throat> about a woman who had been wrongly convicted of um, poisoning her child, and she was serving a life sentence. And we took on that case and shined a light on that case and were able to get the prosecutor to take another look, and they realized that it was a, a genetic defect in this child that had is the reason that he had died and the, the mother hadn't poisoned him and she was she was uh, exonerated and so that's one case that um, wow. I think we're very very proud of because that woman would have spent the rest of her life in prison for a crime that she did not commit pretty unbelievable you guys have solved more than 260 cases that's impressive it's a lot. It, it, when I think about that, we've produced about 1,300 cases, um, but some of those are, are um, you know, the paranormal cases, and those are not, we don't consider those solvable right, cases. Right. But of the solvable cases, uh, 260 have been solved. A lot of those are lost loves. Most of those are lost love cases where we reunite um, you know, people who've been torn apart by adoption or war. Um, and then we have um, this, a lot of fugitive cases have been solved. So I feel like we've gotten a few, a few bad guys off the street, hopefully to keep them from committing another crime. I like in the Netflix reboot with all the new Unsolved Mystery stuff, how you guys direct people to the website and you talk about the reach, you know, to help solve the case. Because it really is, you know, you see with the other shows where they mention, you know, 48 Hours or Dateline or whatever, and they mention things. But you guys are really, it seems more on the path about solving it than just making a cute little show. You know what I mean? The mission is to solve the cases yeah. and to find that one person who knows the, the, the premises, someone somewhere knows the truth, um, and to hopefully find someone who knows the truth. If it's a relative of a, of a bad guy or some, someone out there knows. Do you always do this, Terry, with the family's permission? Oh, yes. We would never, ever do a story without family or law enforcement permission. There was one time uh, a woman called, I guess one of our researchers was kind of nosing around a story and trying to put it together. And she called me and she said, please don't do this story. She just didn't. She had her reasons for not wanting the story done. And I said, oh, gosh, of course not. We would not do that story, any story, if, if someone didn't want us to do it. Unless it was a suspect. <laughs> if a suspect didn't want us to do it, we probably would mm -hmm. uh, continue on. But but law enforcement oftentimes uh, doesn't want to do a story. They, they still feel like they have some leads to follow up on and they just don't want to put it out there yet. Did you ever have anyone that when you sat down to talk to someone that ended up being guilty, but at the time you didn't know that and they were just trying to play along and be inconspicuous? There's been times when we've interviewed people who we believe are probably the, the killer or 
the guilty party. Those are probably the most interesting interviews wow. to do. I've done a couple of those myself where you're just looking at this person in the eye and they're looking at you and you, <laughs> you wonder what they're what they're really thinking as opposed to what they're saying. So you've gone into an interview like that thinking you're you're talking to the killer. That's crazy. Oh yeah. 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 Ooh. ooh. Yeah, that spooks me. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing um, Unsolved Mysteries, Behind the Legacy. It is rolling out now on Roku, Pluto, what is it, Tubi, Samsung TV+, Plus, Amazon Freebie. It's pretty much everywhere. And, of course, you can dig up all the stuff on Netflix. It was great to meet you, Terry. Oh, thank you so much for your interest in the show. We really appreciate it. Thanks for your work, too. Yeah, absolutely. Terry Dunmuir, she is the co-creator of Unsolved Mysteries. Join me next time for another intriguing edition of Unsolved Mysteries. Good morning, X. With Barnes and Leslie.